Since the beginning of 2022, China's anti-corruption efforts have become increasingly fierce in the food system. For example, 27 people have been investigated in the food system within two months in a southern province. As of March 22, 2022, another major grain-producing province had 47 officials in the food system under investigation. One of the officials is a food reserve official at the provincial level. Similar investigations are happening in other major grain production regions including Northeast China and Inner Mongolia. The Xi Jinping administration has focused on the food system for the past two years, which is one indication that China is having a serious food shortage. On December 8, 2021, during a Central Economic Work Conference, Xi Jinping said, Large amounts of good land in certain places aren't growing grains, but are either used as livestock farms or for growing flowers and fruits. What about grains? His administration has shown a great determination to focus on food production than previous ones, but this correction comes a little too late. Why is the top echelon of the CCP so late in recognizing the food crisis? It's because of its long history of systemic fraud and corruption. At the end of 2021, statistics from the U.S. Department of Agriculture showed that China has more than half of the world's stock of corn, rice, wheat, and other major grains. China's share of these major grain reserves has increased by about 20% in the past 10 years. However, there lies a big problem as to where some of these grains that belong to the national treasury have gone. The problem of fraud in China's grain inventories is getting worse. For example, in May 2013, an inspection team from the central government began inspecting grain reserves in the country. Soon after, 78 grain silos in northeast China were lost to fire. 今天凌晨三点,记者赶到现场时看到,中储粮黑龙江林电直属库东侧的数十座粮堆被熊熊大火覆盖,现场浓烟弥漫,烧防队员正在用高压水枪进行扑救。Since then, the public has noticed that China's grain warehouses routinely catch fire. Even Chinese news headlines read, another fire in a grain warehouse. China's grain reserves are a big mess and there are too many interests involved in it. On July 23, 2018, the State Council issued a notice to inspect the national grain inventories. Around when the announcement was made, grain warehouses in various parts of China were on fire one after another. Chinese netizens commented, Stop the inspection. If it continues, the grains will all be burned. Many people will be starved to death. Oh, there are several countries in the world that are at significant risk of reduced yields of crops such as rice, corn, soybeans, and wheat. China is one of them. With 19% of the world's population, China has only 10% of the world's arable land. Yet, for more than 30 years, the CCP hasn't appreciated what little arable land it has. In 1985, under the second party leader Deng Xiaoping, a system of divided taxation between the central and local governments was introduced. That is, local governments were allowed to have a certain amount of tax revenue. It enabled the local governments to develop their industrialization, urbanization, and infrastructure. Under the third party leader, Jiang Zemin, there was a boom in industrial development in the 1990s, which led to the massive appropriation of arable land. This place was all agricultural land, all farmland, and now the government and developers have taken it over and turned it into buildings. No food, all buildings. Can buildings feed people? This is terrible. Chinese Communist Party. These people are 10,000 times worse than those of the eight power allied forces, the Guomindong and the Japanese soldiers. The official Chinese media, Economic Daily, released a report on China's arable land in February 2022. 
It shows from 2009 to 2019, the arable land has decreased by roughly 7.5 million hectares, and it's been disappearing at a faster rate. Investigators believe that if this rate of decline continues in 10 years, China's arable land could break through the minimum threshold of 120 million hectares to ensure food security. The current arable land area is roughly 128 million hectares. Out of the existing arable land, about 70% of it is for grain production. A survey conducted in 2021 found that the average net income of large-scale grain peasants was only 34 RMB per mu, or about five dollars and thirty cents U.S. Since grain farming isn't profitable, many rural populations have left and looked to find work in the cities. As a result of this trend, a lot of arable lands have moved out of the hands of these peasants. The local government and businesses use the land for more profitable farming, such as forestry, orchards, and cash crops, in pursuit of profits. This video shows a local government in a rural village destroying well-grown wheat seedlings without the villagers' consent and forcing them to plant trees on their arable land. After the incident was exposed by the villagers, the government forced them to pull up the saplings within three days. The crop was destroyed, and then the saplings were destroyed too. After large-scale replanting, the arable layers of many lands have been damaged to varying degrees, and some can no longer grow grains. Chinese officials admitted at a press conference in September 2021 that some of China's arable land had been converted to fruit, tea, and medicinal herbs, and that the soil had been damaged and needed to be fertilized and restored before it could be used for grain production again. In particular, the land on which seedlings and turf had been planted suffered significant damage to the soil. Some tree species with well-developed root systems consume nutrients and damage the soil structure, making it difficult to grow food afterward. Moreover, serious soil, water, and air pollution have led to a significant decline in the quality of arable land. According to official surveys from 2005 to 2013, one fifth of all arable land was contaminated. This is the official figure. The reality could be much worse. From 1996 to 2009, various Chinese departments, such as the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Land and Resources, and the State Administration of Taxation, have provided various numbers and statistics on the same subject, but they vary greatly. The inconsistency of the number game has made Xi Jinping very angry. She criticizes officials sternly, saying. They have taken all the good land and used the inferior land, sloping land, and raw land to make up the numbers and eventually balance the books. But the quality of arable land has been greatly diminished. Is this not self-delusion? With de facto food shortages, China's grain imports have been increasing in recent decades. According to Chinese customs data, China's grain imports reached 164 million tons in 2021. The CCP has also long been busy making alliances around the world, expecting to rely on foreign lands to provide some much-needed food. It has attempted to create a food silk road, a project that has been funding agricultural investments around the world as well as acquisitions of new agricultural technologies. The food silk road starts in China, goes into Europe, and then crosses the African continent. Unfortunately, it's now also being impacted by war. Ukraine in Europe is the largest source of corn for China. In 2021, Ukraine replaced the U.S. as the largest supplier of corn to China. In December 2021, 70% of China's corn imports came from Ukraine. In the same year, 64% of China's sunflower oil and approximately 28% of its barley also came from Ukraine. The same impact has been felt by the CCP's establishment of overseas farms in Ukraine. In 2014, the Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps released 100,000 hectares of farmland in Ukraine, an area equivalent to the size of Hong Kong. According to a 50-year plan signed by KSG Agro, Ukraine's largest agricultural group, Ukraine will gradually expand the cooperative farmland to 3 million hectares. The important task of not breaking the red line of food security lies at home. We must attach great importance to the long-term and steady development of domestic agriculture, reinforce support to modern agriculture, which includes the protection of cultivated land, the construction of high-standard farmland, the breakthroughs in seed industry, agricultural machinery, equipment, and facilities. We should rely on domestic resources to ensure basic self-sufficiency in grain and absolute security in stable food. The U.S.-China trade war is another factor that contributes to the current food crisis in China. 
The U.S. is the world's largest exporter of food, while China is the world's largest importer of food. In addition to the U.S., the four countries that China imports the most food from abroad are France, Australia, the Netherlands, and New Zealand. If for some reason these countries were to join together and sanction the CCP like they did Russia, the sanctions would be deadly. The Chinese Academy of Social Sciences has predicted that by the end of the period 2021 to 2025, i.e., 2024 or 2025, China could have a food deficit of about 130 million tons. China's food imports in 2021 already surpassed 150 million tons, which is more than the shortfall estimated by CASS. That is to say, before 2025, there was already a big food shortage in 2021. Under the high command of the CCP top brass such as Xi Jinping, the Chinese government at all levels has started a campaign to restore arable land since the beginning of 2022. We will improve the development quality of agricultural production. Strive to increase the area of farmlands that prevent and control plant diseases and pests by green measures for major crops by four percentage points to more than 50 percent, and increase the area of farmland that adopts unified prevention and control measures for the three major grain crops by one percentage point to more than 42 percent. CCP officials are skilled in face-saving projects. In order to complete the task of restoring farming, some local officials forcibly leveled local fish farming ponds and raised orchards, and then resumed planting grains. However, the resulting losses are unfairly borne by the villagers. A video was released online recently. Here is a city asking its local villagers to cut down trees to grow grains. In the video, a villager said, "We have been just informed to cut down the trees in the field and to plant food again, even at a loss. The price of fertilizer, pesticides, and chemicals is ridiculously high." The video shows that some trees have been cut down and some roots have been dug up. Villagers are cutting down trees in large popular forests, some of which have grown very thick and strong. A peasant said, "China is running out of grains, and the government is mandating trees to be cut down to grow them." All the trees have to be cut, and the oil saws used for cutting down trees are sold out. In the past, it was said, "If you want to be rich, plant trees first." But now they say you can't plant trees. Agricultural experts have said that Shandong Province is a place of yellow earth with little rain and prone to drought. When trees are cut down, it's easy to result in soil erosion, and the land where trees have been planted won't yield good harvests unless more fertilizers and chemicals are applied. These days, the cost of pesticides and fertilizers is getting increasingly high. Peasants are coerced to grow food, yet they can't make any profit. Bizarre situations have even appeared in some parts of China, where they grow ground nuts on concrete and crops on basketball courts. Radio Free Asia reported that a Jiangsu farming family said on WeChat that their contracted fish ponds of 1,000 mu had been forcibly leveled, causing direct losses of millions of RMB. Some farming families were even arrested on the charge of destroying farmland. Except for face-saving projects, it's difficult for Chinese officials to answer practical questions, such as how to effectively restore arable land or how to keep enough peasants on the land to grow food. Moreover, the policies adopted by China in the midst of the outbreak are contradictory to the policies adopted to alleviate the food crisis. For example, Jilin Province in northeastern China, a major agricultural province, has been implementing a COVID zero policy since the outbreak began in March 2022. At a critical time when preparations for spring plowing are underway, some farm families are delaying spring plowing because of the lockdown. This peasant was driving his tractor alone in the sprawling farmland when suddenly a police car pulled up in front of him. A police officer came out of the police car and said to the peasant that he wasn't allowed to go out of his house. He asked him to step out of his tractor and followed him to the police station for further investigation. The peasant got out of the tractor helplessly. Accept the investigation. Please cooperate. When I cooperate with you, my crop will be ruined. I am now verbally summoning you. You are now suspected of violating the emergency orders issued by the People's Government. You are now verbally summoned to the public security organs to accept the investigation. Can you do it? Let's go. Get in the car. 
Just like that, the peasant who was plowing in spring was taken away by the police. According to the Jilin Daily, the CCP's official media, Jilin provincial authorities held a meeting on April 6 to prepare for spring plowing. It emphasized a COVID-0 policy along with spring plowing production. The public reported that the lockdown has led to disruptions in the sale of grain, seeds, and other agricultural materials. In Jilin, there are still at least three high-risk and 42 medium-risk areas that are under strict control. Some companies that deal in grain seeds have had to close their doors for the spring plowing and preparation season. For a long time, two things have been indispensable for growing grain in China, fertilizer and pesticides. Without them, Chinese fields wouldn't produce any more. At present, the factories that produce pesticides and fertilizers are located in major cities. They have stopped working. It will affect the market price and raise the cost of growing food. So when it comes to the food crisis, this year and next year may not be the worst yet. It's likely that in two to three years' time, the CCP will have an even bigger headache. Historically, disasters, plagues and famines are often linked together. Based on the current trajectory, it seems that the outlook under the CCP's governance can hardly escape this fate. 